What's going on YouTube? So off-road capable SUVs are all the rage these days, which is why Honda first resurrected the Passport nameplate about five years ago. However, that model was very similar to the Pilot and somewhat lacked the distinction that many people wanted. However, Honda has listened, which is why we have the 2026 all new Honda Passport. It has a unique design, rugged features, much elevated technology and luxury, and is still keeping the classic V6 engine. So is this new Passport what you always wanted the Passport to be? Well, let's take a detailed first look to find out. All right, so let's start off here with the exterior design. Now, as soon as you walk up to this vehicle, you'll notice that it has a lot of presence. It is also very distinct from its brethren, the Honda Pilot. You have a totally different look up here, which is a lot more boxy and a lot more rugged. As a matter of fact, it is also wider as well. Now, in terms of our grill, you're gonna notice we have kind of two distinct parts going on here. You've got the rectangular fascia up here at the top with the gloss black finish. You have the center section here, which has passport stamped into the sheet metal. And then down below, you've got this very rugged looking lower fascia as well. I should mention this is going to be offered in three trim levels, RTL, Trail Sport, and Trail Sport Elite. What we're looking at right now is the Trail Sport model. And you also have this design up here on the top of the hood, which looks quite nice. Now, Dropping down to the lower fascia here, let's talk about the actual off-road functionality. So, first of all, we have 8.3 inches of ground clearance, which is quite nice. The other thing that's very nice is that we have increased approach angle of 23 degrees compared to the Pilot. And we also have real metal skid plates, which will be great, of course, for protecting the vehicle when you're going off-road. You also have these recovery hooks here, which are rated for two times the vehicle's weight. And let's go ahead and take a look at the headlights as well. These are very distinct looking. As you can see, they've got that same rectangular shape as the grille itself. We have reflector LEDs. They're standard on all three trim levels. You've got this boxy daytime running light and turn signal indicator. It will be finished in amber for both of the Trail Sport trim levels. And then you also have LED fog lamps down below. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about our wheel options. All three trim levels will actually come with 18 inch alloy wheels, although they will have distinct designs and finishes depending on which one you select. This again is the Trail Sport model, so you'll see that we have kind of a gray finish on board, which looks very off-road capable, especially when you have it wrapped in these specifically designed uh, all-terrain tires for Passport Duty. Uh, Honda says they're both off-road capable and quiet on-road. We look forward to putting that to the test in the future. You also have nice looking cladding here, which just kind of emphasizes the ruggedness of this model. And in terms of our mirrors, Trail Sport models get the gloss black finish up top. We also have standard blind spot monitoring. Now at the side of the new Passport, you're gonna see that it has a lot more of a boxy shape this year, which I think is exactly what buyers are looking for. It's up about an inch and a half over the previous generation in terms of length, so it's about 190 inches long, and it is still about nine inches shorter than a Pilot for reference. Now, as far as some of the design touches, you'll notice that we have blacked out door handles. Once again, those really wide fender flares, and then we also have blacked out trim through all of our window area. We have raised roof rails, and Honda was quick to point out that for this piece here on the side, uh, they've actually made this a very durable material for any of those off-roading adventures. You know, they actually just stacked uh, fishing poles up over here to kind of demonstrate the point of that to keep your paint from being scratched. Now, when we head around to the rear design of this new Passport, certainly we have a completely distinct look compared to the previous generation. And now that Drew has gotten around all of the cacti that they have sitting around here, let's take a detailed look at the rear design. Once again, I think it looks really good. It gives you that 
boxy, tough look that buyers are wanting. The rear glass is a very vertical, and we're also going to have an exposed wiper. We have this black piece through the middle section, and we have Passport stamped prominently into the tailgate area itself. Honda says that they will also offer a black Honda badge as well as a black Passport text through here to give you that nice contrast. Now, as far as the taillights themselves are concerned, a very squared off look to them. They do appear to be uh, mostly LED. This is your LED accenting right through here. I also assume the brake light is LED. However, it does look like your reverse light might be incandescent. As we drop down to this lower fascia, no exposed exhaust outlets, and you are going to have a standard tow hitch for your 5,000 pound tow rating. Now, one of the great things about all Honda products is that they're pretty much all including every safety system. That's, of course, going to continue for this 2026 Passport. So you're going to have things even like adaptive cruise control with traffic jam support standard on all models. But enough about the outside. I'm sure you're very curious as to what the inside is like. So let's dive into that. But first, if you're new here, we're brothers and we've been reviewing cars since we were 12 and 16. We may be young, but we love cars. <laughs> and we'd love for you to subscribe to be a part of our Car Confections family. Let's learn a lot, have some fun with all the latest cars. All right, now let's go ahead and check out the interior. Of course, you do have a smart entry system on board, so you'll just be able to grab behind that handle and unlock the door. And then let's take a look at the interior. So obviously it is going to be somewhat familiar if you have seen the current generation of Pilot, but there are a lot of unique touches on board once you really start to dig into the details. Let's start off by talking about our seats. So the base RTL will come with a leatherette seat, and you also do have a synthetic leather on board for this Trail Sport. You get real leather if you choose the Trail Sport Elite. Now as far as this, it does feel quite nice and realistic. Uh, this is the uh, color scheme that you get on the Trail Sport. So it's a black with orange contrast. So you've got a stripe through there. You have Trail Sport branding in the headrest, lots of stitching. And then you have kind of this cloth that's going to make up the bolsters and the outside edges. Overall, this looks really cool. And Honda says it's super easy to clean as well if you get it dirty out on the trail. As far as the seats themselves, you are going to have 10 ways of power adjustment, including two-way lumbar support. We also have memory seats located up there on the door trim. But let's go ahead and climb inside so that we can check out the rest of the cabin. Now, as far as the rest of the cabin materials are concerned, we have a leatherette padded armrest. You have this cloth material, which goes through the center section and this really cool geometric trim on the door trim. It is soft touch along the top. You have a soft touch plastic all across the upper part of the dashboard. And then through here, we have more of that cloth trim with the orange stitching, accenting running through there as well. And then more of that trim in the center section. I do want to also point out that the storage cubby actually has the pattern of a topographical map. And of course you do have standard push button start as well. Obviously we are in a studio setting right now, so I'm not going to fire up the engine, but we already have all the electronics and stuff fired up so we can get into our gauge cluster right off the bat. This is a 10.2 inch digital gauge cluster. You are going to have full customizability on board with this model. Uh, one thing I do want to point out is that a head-up display is not offered on any of the three trim levels for the Passport. As we come back to the steering wheel, you've got a specific design here with those orange accents and orange stitching on Trail Sport models. The wheel itself is manual tilt and telescoping. You do also have an available heated steering wheel as well. Now, let's talk about interior storage. So this is the most interior storage Honda has ever offered on a Passport. And you can tell that as soon as you open up this center console, it is a huge amount of space here, really deep cubby, rubber lined down there at the bottom. Uh, we're in Los Angeles today, though we don't have our donuts, but we do look forward to testing it out in the future. It's gonna fit a lot of them, I can tell. We have two cup holders right there. You've got that storage cubby I was mentioning earlier, plus a standard wireless phone charging pad across the entire lineup. You also have a small, compact electronic shifter, which is the push button style we've seen on many Honda products. When you're in drive, you can also shift via the paddle shifters on the steering wheel. And when you go into reverse, you'll either have a standard backup camera or the 360 degree camera system, which is available on the Trail Sport Elite model. Uh, if you choose that, you do also get trail cameras. So if you're going off-road a lot, I'd certainly recommend maybe springing for that Trail Sport Elite trim level. Now, in terms of our climate controls, three-zone automatic climate is standard equipment. 
as you can see, we can make our adjustments super easy with these nice physical controls. Everything's very simple and easy to understand in this cabin, which is something I definitely appreciate. You also have standard heated seats right there, and you get available ventilated seats if you get that Trail Sport Elite trim level. Another nice feature that is available to you is a Bose sound system on that top end Trail Sport Elite. We won't be sampling that out today though because we are of course on a little bit of a time crunch. And that brings me to this. This is what I really want to talk about with the cabin. So obviously when it comes to the Honda Pilot, a lot of people have complained, you know, it doesn't have a 12.3 inch display like the Accord. Well, thankfully here with this Passport, Honda is giving you the 12.3 inch display. And not only that, it has Google apps built in. So you have things like Google Maps right here natively inside of the system. It's very nice and responsive and easy to engage with. You also have wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, and this is standard on all three trim levels. We're hoping, of course, for 2026 that Honda will also bring this to the Pilot as well. Up top here, we've got our auto dimming mirror. The Homelink remotes are not built into the mirror. And then you also have a panoramic sunroof. This is going to come on the Trail Sport and the Trail Sport Elite. The RTL does not have one. Now, of course, the Passport has always been based on the Pilot, and because of that, you are going to have a ton of rear seat space. That's certainly a great thing about this vehicle. That's going to continue for this all-new model, so we're sitting at about 41 inches of legroom. That is a ton, guys. We don't have official headroom figures just yet, but just me sitting back here, I have to say it's it's got to be about 40 inches of headroom. It's so much room back here. It feels very open and airy. And when it comes to how much knee room we have with the seat adjusted to Drew's driving position, we are sitting at a very solid eight inches of knee room. My feet can also slide up underneath of these seats and the seats themselves uh, do recline a little bit, I guess. Actually, no, I don't think they do recline, but overall they're quite comfortable. Now, as far as the center armrests, we do have two cup holders inside. And then here in the center, you'll notice standard vents on every single model. Now, I do want to point out that this piece right here would be replaced with climate controls if you choose for that top-end Trail Sport Elite. But you do have your own zone of climate regardless of what trim level you choose. And then down here at the bottom, we have a household outlet and two USB-C ports. Over at the door trim, you're going to find a nicely done one. It is hard touch on the upper part. However, uh, it is a nice cloth through the center section, leather on the armrest portion, and tons of door storage, just like any pilot ever has been. You can also get rear sunshades on the Trail Sport Elite. Now, walking up to the cargo area, we do have a standard power tailgate on every single version, and I think you're going to be very pleasantly surprised with how much space you're going to find back here. So, as far as these figures are concerned, it is increased over the previous generation by quite a bit, and it is absolutely massive. 44 cubic feet behind the second row of seats. If we fold those seats down, we're looking at about 84 cubic feet. So, that's really not much smaller than the Pilot at all, which is quite impressive. Now, as far as some of the features that you're going to find. We have a household outlet here on the left side, and you also notice that on the sides of the uh, cargo area, you have little storage cubbies that you can stick different items, uh, which is quite nice because, of course, this is, once again, based on the pilot, you do have that extra storage ability. Additionally, they've done a little bit of interesting things with the underfloor storage. So as you can see, this piece actually folds side to side, so you can stick something over here while still having the cargo floor on this side. And then you can also lift it up and that will reveal, reveal your spare tire. You can also get a full-size spare tire as an option if you would like to do so. And as far as the cargo length and width figures, let me go ahead and fold those seats down. So getting our length figure first and foremost, this is from the passenger seat, which is pretty much Drew's driving position, 78 inches of cargo length. From behind the second row of seats, very impressive, 42 inches. And the cargo width, also awesome, 48 inches wide, and then cargo height is quite good at over 32 inches tall, and that's not including what's in the underfloor storage area. Now this is the part a lot of you guys have probably been looking forward to. Let's talk about what is under the hood. Now, if you're a fan of classic powertrains, we've got a classic V6 under the hood, which a lot of the competition, of course, has been moving towards turbo four cylinders and hybridization. This is Honda's 3.5 liter 
V6 engine. It makes 285 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque. Now, like I was just saying, that does mean you don't have any turbocharging, no hybridization, anything like that on board. You also have a 10-speed automatic transmission, just like with the Pilot, but unlike the Pilot, this is going to be standard with Honda's torque vectoring all-wheel drive system across all three trim levels. Now, of course, this is an early first look, so we don't have official EPA-rated fuel economy figures. However, of course, we can think about what the Pilot gets, and in this case, the Pilot Trail Sport gets 20 mpg combined. I would expect this will come in very similar to that. Maybe it will go a little bit better, 21 mpg combined, because it's a little bit smaller than the Pilot. And then I also want to talk a little bit about you know, the suspension. Obviously, we're not driving it today, but this does have an off-road tuned suspension across all models. However, it's supposed to be you know, both very good off-road and very compliant on-road. We certainly look forward to trying that out in person when this vehicle is closer to going on sale and we drive it. So make sure you stay tuned to the channel. Now let's talk about pricing and availability for this new Passport. Now, Honda has not officially released any pricing figures. However, you know how this works. Car confections, we always like to estimate the prices, and a lot of times we are pretty darn close. So the current Passport starts at around $42,000 and goes to about $49,000. We do expect a price increase for this new model. I'd expect the new starting price would be about $45,500 and range into the low $50,000 price point, around $50,000. One to $52,000 for a fully loaded model. Of course, keep in mind, these are just estimates. These are not official from Honda just yet, but that is what we are thinking. Now, as far as availability, Honda says you're not actually going to have to wait too much longer for one of these passports. Uh, it's available in early 2025. So I'd assume that means Q1 of next year, you'll be able to pick up one of these 21 or 26 passports, excuse me. Now, if you're looking to buy a Honda Passport or any new vehicle, we would encourage you to go to carconfections.com slash new car quotes. Now, the reason you do that is because we have a tool on our website that will connect you with local car dealers in your area to get you the best price. It's also going to give you access to invoice pricing information, which is a great tool for dealership negotiation. If you'd like to take advantage of that, a link is provided in our video description, and we also have a pinned comment at the top of this video. And guys, that's going to be it for our in-depth studio first look review of this all-new 2026 Honda Passport. If you enjoyed watching this video or found it helpful in your purchasing decision, which we hope you did, we'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. By subscribing, you're going to be informed on the latest car reviews such as this Passport review as well as comparisons and automotive news. You won't want to miss out. Also, you're going to be a part of our Car Confections family. We have a lot of fun on this channel. And if you're already a part of our family, thank you so much for your continued support. We'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.